This is part two of an ongoing analysis of the acoustic soundtrack from 9-11 uh, eyewitness uh, from the Hoboken Pier. This is in Manhattan and as you can tell from the video track this is the uh, World Trade Center's uh, events leading up to and following their collapses and acoustic analysis and on this tape here let's see I'll try to show you with the cursor here okay this mark is 500 Hertz uh, acoustics this is basically the the low frequency and the subsonics and stuff but the most important things you're gonna see are from you know like 50 Hertz to about 250 Hertz but uh, right around 100 150 Hertz is the frequency that uh, conveys most readily over water long distances because kind of like a thermal inversion that occurs because of high humidity right near the surface of of the sea level and that's why you know there's fog horns and stuff to uh, uh, you know uh, let ships know that land or, or rocks or a hazard is near um, anyway the, the low frequencies can travel quite a distance uh, over water under these conditions. So that worked out so that these uh, low frequencies can readily uh, reach, uh, let's see, Richard Seagal's camera when he was videotaping this and it helps us to be able and identify quite clearly uh, that there were explosions, their timings, if you know uh, Richard he, he worked out the timing and stuff as an example for us here and synced it later on on his tape uh, with the video and things like that but there's a lot of things on this video that you can see and and identify that you cannot identify in a lot of the other recordings of that morning simply because there was a lot of uh, street traffic uh, sirens and helicopters and everything whereas at the distance a lot of those things are attenuated by the distance and the different characteristics whereas the lower frequencies the subsonics and infrasound and and just the low frequencies from the explosions and rumblings and things like that are readily preserved and uh, recorded on the soundtrack I'm going to get with re start the recording up so you can uh, continue to see for yourself this is part two well, it, this, this really is a, a case of a situation that you thought couldn't get any worse, getting no. progress, progressively yes. worse. Yes. Uh, first one plane crashing into the World Trade Center, then uh, a second crashing into the second tower of the World Trade Center. Unbelievable. Word now that a plane has crashed into the Pentagon. It has been evacuated along with the West Wing of the White House. The Treasury has been evacuated. The Capitol evacuated. The Sears Tower in Chicago has been evacuated. There was no threat of an attack against the uh, Sears Tower, but they're obviously going to quit while they're ahead there. Okay, I halted the tape temporarily, but now you can start seeing the pop, 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 you know, things going off over here. And, well, you'll be able to see it later on in the tape at the second tower also, but evidently these are preparatory charges going off to start weakening some of the structural uh, elements of the buildings that's that's my hypothesis um, and it's pretty standard for controlled demolitions and things even you know instead of uh, the structures being destroyed from the bottom up in a standard controlled demolition uh, I think they they basically destroyed these towers from the uh, top down as you can see the destruction wave going down at free fall speed etc. Here, here's the uh, continuation. And uh, all of this world... Oh wait, oh my god, oh my god, the building fell! Are you there? The building fell!
circle the building. 